I'm Dolly Curtis, and it's with great pleasure that I introduce to you a young friend of mine, James Prosick, who is home from Yale and a chance for me to visit with him and visit with you. Hi, James. Hi. I wanted to catch up a little bit with you from about four or five years ago when I was introduced to you and you were first starting on your um, trout exploration. So we should tell everybody that James is a fisherman, an expert fisherman, and he's also recently authored a book where he's done all the writing and the illustrations as well. So that makes you a writer, a painter, which is an I'm artist, get at it from all angles. a fisherman, <laughs> and a traveler, which you are, to travel to find the fish, and you're also a naturalist for sure, because you like the outdoors, you spend as much time as you can. A lot of compliments, thank you. So <laughs> how do you get all of that in one person? Um, well, I, you know, I try to divide my time up so that I can see things from all angles because I think, I mean, uh, when I was deciding for a major at Yale, I couldn't, I w I'd first been interested in architecture because it seemed to be a good discipline between, you know, the technical art and um, I enjoyed architecture history a lot too because you get, you learn a lot of history through that. But I, I, it seemed to be a little too limiting. I wanted to learn more about the English language and stuff. I'm majoring in English. How do you video. go from fish to architecture? <laughs> you better tell everybody that you're a great fisherman. Well, I, I guess everything's relative. And I guess I, I, I've spent a lot of time on the water and experience is what's necessary, you know, and fishing? to make a good yeah, What type fisherman. of fishing is it that you've learned to do? Um, I started out mostly fishing for bass and stuff in local reservoirs in Easton. Oh, <laughs> yeah. I heard that what you had done as a youngster is go fishing in the prohibited areas of the reservoir. Yeah, and I, I got caught by a patrolman, which had turned into a fortuitous thing. He uh, became your mentor. Joe Haynes, yeah, he's a, a great guy, very knowledgeable about the woods, and um, he's taught me a lot of things about local fish and game and a lot of things about... I think he's an extraordinary person, Joe Haynes, and we've had him on the program. He's very shy, though, because he's also an <laughs> outdoor person. He Yeah, he, uh, maybe he doesn't have much experience well, he does, being with people, but... Not um, with cameras. Perhaps, of yeah. Of course. But, um... So he caught you fishing illegally, and then over the yeah, years took just, you under his wing. Yeah, he, he, I guess, um, it just turned out to be a good thing. What yeah. did he teach you? Um, well, he took me, he tried to show me that there was good fishing in, in, um, in legal places, as opposed to legal places. Have you done a lot of fishing is. in Fairfield County? Yeah, oh yeah, absolutely. I mean, most of the fishing that I, I've done is, you know, around here. But I, you know, the things you learn in, in local streams and areas translates, you know, when you, in, when you travel to... Um, I know you've traveled all over. Is it all over the whole country or all over the East Coast to trout, to um, fish for the trout? In the beginning it was, um, there was one particular fish, uh, trout in northern Maine that inspired the, the whole project about you know, painting the trout of North America. That was a is that what the project is? Yeah, it, it's um, the book is on um, the trout of North America, and I've, it's never been done before. It's kind of filled a niche that it needed to be filled for a long time. There's there's all kinds of books on birds of North America, you know, and I'd always been inspired by um, Audubon's work. There was a book from the Easton Library that at first kind of caught my interest. My dad is is very much into birds and. Um, he would bring home um, the volume of Audubon's bird books of, of North America, his paintings. Right, and all and those wonderful paintings. Right. Now, you already had started painting the right. fish, though. Uh, no, no, this was when I was five or six years old. Oh, we this going back that far? Time, yeah. Okay. No, but I... <laughs> Being that you're only 20, though, it doesn't <laughs> go back all that far. But I, and I started, I would sit down and assiduously paint you know, copy his drawings. And I'd always been interested in doing a catalog of something, you know, cataloging a species or, or type of Oh, so you had animal. a red, already yeah, had that interest. Yeah, it was some kind of, yeah, desire that, you know, impelled me. To, I'm not sure what the source of these desires is, but. <laughs> so, I don't, about 1989 or so, my dad cut out this article about a rare type of trout uh, called a blueback that lived in northern Maine. And um, I'd never heard of it before, and I, you know, considered myself somewhat knowledgeable about about yeah, because I'd read a lot and stuff. And um, so I went to the library, assuming that I would be able to find um, a volume on trout equivalent to a volume on like, birds. Audubon's book of mm -hmm. birds, and it didn't exist. So I started compiling my own list, and it, um, you know, just 
blossom. So you got the <laughs> idea that you could do it, or you just were doing it because no, it wasn't existing? No, I just existing. did it. Yeah, no, I just did it as an interest. It, I didn't it wasn't intend there, to do a book or anything. I see. You just needed the help. Yeah, well, I... So you did it yourself. I don't know where well, these desires... Okay, yeah, I understand that, <laughs> too. Just kind of, you know, started doing it, so... And writing letters to biologists around the country and learning where rare trout of North America exist and live. So I guess you went to Maine to find this rare. Right, yeah, with my friend Taylor Hoyt, who's also an Easton resident. And um, we uh, caught one after three days of fishing. And, uh, you know, that's kind of what started it all. It's called the blueback. Blueback, right. Mm -hmm. And there's only in so many places. Eight ponds in Maine, yeah. And that's it. They only right. exist. So right. you went to one of them. Right. And I understand that to go there is one thing, but to catch one is also very unusual. Yeah, well, especially in the summer, because they go deep in the in the summer. So have you learned a great deal about them? I heard that you're a scientific fisherman. I've read that. Um, what does that mean, then? Well, I, I'm i not just interested in... I mean, to be a, a good, successful fisherman, you have to know a lot about the habits of the fish, I their spawning think. habits, every aspect of their life their history. Their food chain. I would figure that would help you be so a better fisherman. So the science is... I mean, that's a incredibly huge part of it. I mean, it's you can't you can't fish. I mean, well, without knowing. Okay, I understand <laughs> that. You'd want to know the food chain and right, and where. Everything. The only thing is, not everybody can have the other side uh, of their brain so well developed because maybe <laughs> someone's a good fisherman, but they wouldn't necessarily be an artist. Or they On might, the you know, side too. Mm -hmm, well, the other side of the yeah, brain. That's so not necessary, right? But. There's a romance to fishing. I mean, you go out, you know, you try to... Tell me about that, because I'm not a fisher. I've never done <laughs> any fishing. I mean, to me, it looks like hours and hours. I like the peacefulness well, I mean, of catching, it, but... catching fish is definitely a big part of it. And days you don't catch fish um, are usually not as good as days you, obviously, but do catch fish. But I, I've been in trying to figure out why I like fishing. And I, I think it has to do... I've gravitated more towards stream fishing and I think one of the reasons I've tried to create a philosophy. I okay. don't, I don't, <laughs> there's something yourself. about the stream, the way it it flows, you know, continuously until it hits the ocean. Then the vapor rises up a new cloud, and then the cloud comes back over the, the land and rains into the river. Tall and there's cycle. that yeah, there's a continuing cycle, and it provides a pe a bit of immortality in a mortal life. Okay. And you stand in the stream, you see a reflection in the stream. You just become part of this world that, you know... It, you're part of it, all right? You're standing in it, aren't you, with hip boots? And or, uh, yeah, right, you're in it. And at the same time, there's... You're invading it, actually. And so, well, you could see it that way. I don't, I don't see you human... See I don't see any human interaction with the world as, would you say, a natural... Invading, invading it. it. I think humans are as much a part of nature okay. as anything else. But I, that's just my own. Right, so you're standing in it, and the water's all around you. But then there's a lot of mortality too. They, do you see the insect cycles, which a lot of the mayfly hatches that the, the trout feed on the insects, a lot of the hatches that occur are, are daily, they're ephemeral. And so you see an entire insect's lifespan in a single day. Wow. So you see mortality and immortality. It's just the contrast. I think the contrast is what makes life interesting. You know, well, I hope we were able to show everybody a little bit about what tying flies and what James Prozac is all about, because this guy is very complicated, actually, in a funny way, you know, because you're such a um, simple, kind of gentle soul. You're also quite complicated in that your mind works in terms of writing words, poetry, too, I wouldn't doubt, right. and lots of drawing and painting, and tying flies, which in itself is an art form, and then the actual fishing, which we didn't get to do on this wintry day today, but we'll try to get out there with him sometime in the spring. And, and putting this first book together, which is going to be quite an honor at age 20, and going to Yale at the same time, that's mm -hmm. a lot. You're doing a lot. Thanks. thanks for taking the time with us today. It's yeah, fascinating, James. Mm -hmm.